I think it should be okay. It's vertical. And the event was raised at Frankheit, number 17. Brothers and sisters, welcome to our evening service. We will now have our first song, Psalm 1. You shall. 
shall shepherd them with an iron, with an iron staff. You shall shatter them like a potter's vessel. And now, O kings, understand, ye trusted, ye entrusted, all ye judges, the earth, serve the Lord with fear and joy so and joy so trembling. They are done in, in, in his instructing. Lest the Lord be angry and you perish him from the righteous way. When his, when his fury shall be put in time, 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 it. blessed are all who trust, trust in him. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. Psalm 3.
Second lesson. Not 
understanding the avoidance that he did communicate with my affliction. No in Philippians, no also, that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as they were coming or as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye send once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but because I desire fruit that we have gone to your account. But I have all and above. I am full of the seed of the practices, the fitness, the things which you were sent from you. An order of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren shall with me greet you. All the saints salute you, chief the day of our Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you. 
accept the persecuted and help them. Thou didst save those in difficulty. Thou thinkest of the hungry and avengest those against whom sin was committed. Thou art the friend of the faithful, speaker to the righteous, dwelling place for the pure. Thou hearest those who call upon thee in righteousness, protectest the widow, savest the orphan, grantest right leadership to the church which thou hast made. Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, 
Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one praying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was told his camel's hair, and with a girl of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway, coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open, and the Spirit of the dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven, saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. We thank ye, and believe the gospel. Now, as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further, thence he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship, mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants, and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and the talk. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, Lord Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region, round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they came out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew, with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of disease, diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak.
because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up, a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had come in, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and said unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, and both had sent him away, and said unto him, See, thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in, in the desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. Amen. Amen. Yes, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things in the world and in the Apostolic Church, and we believe in one baptism for the remission of sins, and we wait for the resurrection from the dead to become a world without end. Amen. Him?
Okay, good afternoon. Ms. Grace, uh, Head Administrator at Chandrite. Fathers, brothers, uh, sisters, welcome. Thanks you to God. <laughs> Thanks you to God for allowing us this another opportunity to come here to Ghana to hold our, our Kuj retreat. And while we are here, we have our fathers coming in from different islands in the Caribbean. We like to ask for today, we like to ask our father from right here in China and Tobago, our father will allow it, guess will allow it to come and bring a message this afternoon. Please welcome. Good evening, Your Grace, Archbishop Abuna Tadius, Archbishop of the Caribbean, Latin America, Head Administrator, Archmandre, Abad Abiesis, Visiting Archmandre, President Hatchman Wright, by the judges, all other protocols observed, all the wonderful people and all the children in the midst, good evening. How are you? We are so thankful that you all are able to come and join us this evening and to share a little of the food uh, for the soul that we are privileged to be part of in this retreat journey. Um, the journey has now started, but so much has already been imparted in terms of the knowledge of the truth upon us that we're sorry that all of you are here, we wish you could have been here for the regular amount of duration of period that we are staying here in the church compound. I hope that you will find it fit to make the time so that you could come. There are many things to benefit from and uh, come take note uh, so that you have something to carry home in your Bible. Huh? Yes. Food for the soul. Most important. That's the, that's the reason why we were sent here on earth. To prepare our souls for the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit of God. And as we purge ourselves, during this duration of fast. And with prayer, we must be reminded not to allow the space to go vacant that we create within us in this, the course of this purging period, but to fill it and continue to maintain it with the word of God and with good behavior. With the word of God and with good behavior. We are happy for the young men in our midst who within their heart they are willing to be part of this great work of ambassadorship. 
to relay the message to their peers and their families about the good news about the kingdom of God. We hope that they come and they do well and they pay attention, not just to use the facility, the, the opportunity as, as, a, as, a, as a, what you call a, um, a babysitting camp, but to benefit individually and collectively. What is, is imparted to us by the Holy Fathers and through the Holy Spirit that we are invoking to be with us and to guide us and to overshadow us and to preserve us so that in so doing diligently, in so doing willingly, in so doing as recipients of the good news, God will see our effort, our struggle, and paraventia, he will allow our names to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's pay attention to that, because that is the ultimate goal of our journey on this earth. The gospel world has many things in it to see. Many things. Can't go through all of that. Night will meet us. But I can give you from the start concerning what was said was this messenger that God has sent to earth to speak to the people and to prepare their hearts for his coming, where he would finish the work. The question is, are you allowing yourself also to be a messenger of the good news of the kingdom of people? That's our calling. Are you allowing yourself willingly For God to use you, and you could be a messenger of light to bring His glory on earth. Please let it be so. God has given us all persons a measure of common sense. And he warns us about, against the deception. For the deception is strongly emphasized by our Lord and is of particular importance against following Paul's Christ. You never know what word you will get this evening. Yeah? So please, maybe the word is for one person, maybe the word is for a few persons, but the word is the seed that when you receive it, now the air, faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing the word of God. Now the air is two in its nature. If you remove them and you put them together, what shape it would look like to you? A heart. A heart. And if you spell the word heart in the middle of the word, what it mark, what it says, how it's spelled, air. So the word comes to the air and register in the heart and turn the whole life of the individual from this state to another state. From unworthiness to worthiness. When ultimate loyalty and obedience to Christ and his gospel message is challenged, our actions must, all, must show our obedience to God rather than man. 
even to the point of prison or death. We must free ourselves from hate, sadness, anger, in order to receive the greatest virtue, and that is love, not emotions. That is love, it is not emotions. The real goal of Christianity is not to avoid sin per se, because our whole nature came from that environment. But to live a good life, to live a good and righteous life as possible. When we say the kingdom of God suffers violence, what does that, that mean to us? Those who have an earnest desire for Christ, they let nothing stand between themselves and faith in Him. The Lord do not dwell in temples made with hands. We go into I'm coming to the, 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 the main point of my this course this evening. Eh? These are just the introductions. The Lord will not dwell in temples made with hands. In the case, God's presence is not limited to a specific temple, but dwells in every soul that receives him. Do you agree? Do you agree? Yes. Because the soul is reborn in baptism and it can now, through that exercise, can now follow the law of God. Before that, lawless, wayward. The apostles founded and deposited everything which pertains to the truth, and everyone who wishes draws from her the drink of life, while the rest are thieves and robbers. That is why it is necessary to avoid them and cherish the things pertaining to Christ through his church and hold on to the holy traditions of truth. Are you following so far? We being children of Abraham shares in the same attributes as Abraham. Likewise, those who reject Christ share in the same attributes as the devil and are rightly called the devil's children. It is not Abraham's children of the flesh is his biological offsprings. It is those who continue in this faith who are Abraham's true offsprings. What is the church? Now we are getting to the meat of things. There are three aspects of the church. But first, what is the church? Question. The gathering of people to worship God. Church is also divided in three dimensions. The building, the gathering or the congregation, and the individuals. Matthew 16, 13 to 18. 
Follow with me, come on. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? The Son of Man. Am? So they said, some say John, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? 15 to 16. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That was Simon Peter's response to God's questions. What is ours? So the first criteria for us is what is your foundation? When Simon said, you are the Christ, is the foundation that is also the foundation of our belief. Because even the demons believe and tremble. One of the things we see in the environment that we call church, our Lord never called destructive church per se. He said, this is my house, the place of prayer. So as we go along, we will get to more direct acknowledgement of the church. One of the things we see in a church is a lot of lights and maybe candles and other type of lights. Right? So too, as the church, you yourself, we need to shine our light or God's light in us to the people we meet every day. When we come to the church building, what do we see on the walls? Icons of saints surrounding us, aren't we? Question now, what do you surround yourself with on a daily basis? In your daily lives? Are these people and things that you surround yourself with do they encourage right behavior for us to be like, to, for us to be Christ-like? Or do we compromise or break some of our boundaries because we do not want to offend them as our associates? Think about it. If you are a church, your foundation needs to be manifested in the things that you do. When we come here, we see that this is a church or a building or place of worship. So too, when people see us, when people see you, they must see you are a church manifested. The next thing, Christ told Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. How does that relate to us? In order to know you are a church, who revealed that to you? What it means to you? Some of us think when we come to church, we do it from our own ability. It's not so. It is not so. Those of us who came by some or through some by someone waking us up to come 
is not mere flesh and blood. If we think that you are wrong, so who revealed it to you to be a church? It is the Holy Spirit. Galatians 1, 15 to 16. Do I have to read again or so we'll take some money to read it quickly? And pay specific attention to specific words in that in that um, yes? Anyone from here? Well? Yes, thank you. Galatians 1, 13 to 16. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past the Jews religion. How that beyond this measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted and comforted in the Jewish religion about many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the people, immediately I conclude not the flesh and the Immediately I confer. I want you to underline the word confer. We're going to get into the definition of it. What it means to confer. Just, just a while. What Paul is saying, flesh and blood did not reveal me as a church. What does confer mean? I ask to underline the word. To confer is to reason with oneself as flesh and blood. Now, when God calls you to behave in a certain way, we need to be careful how we confer before we comply. Remember the definition of control. It's a reasoning of flesh and blood self. But when God calls you, it's a spiritual calling. He said we have to be careful how we confer before we comply. The revealer of you as a church is not flesh and blood. You are the church people. Again, you are a church. Will the gates of hell prevail against you? Examine that. If the gates of Hades is prevailing against you, then examine yourself. What does prevail means? See, the English language are all kind of definition of words. So we have to be able to specify what is the meaning so that we can understand how to relate to it. What does prevail means? Not just winning a battle. To prevail is not just to win a battle. You hear what it is? It is more about winning a war. We may lose a battle, but not the war. While we struggle in the battle, what God wants is for us to prevail at the end. who made a revelation about Christ by God to be the head of the apostles. Although Christ knew he would deny him three times, that was losing the battle. But at the end, he won the war. How? Through his sacrificial death. You are not here by chance this evening. You are here Presenting yourself to God as a living sacrifice. You must honor that. A man that is in honor and does not know is like a beast that perish. Who are you? You need to find yourself. 
and there your confidence will rise and you will not have to allow yourself the pain of suffering from low self-esteem. How our journey in Christianity works is through failure and struggles, but at the end of our life, but at the end of our life, you have won the war. Are you understand what I'm saying? Coming to church is a testimony of the Spirit of God, revelation as church in your life. What's that, what does that mean to us? You are not just Sunday church goers. Most times, that is our mindset of church. We must change that mindset. Every day you are the church. So, we need to smell like church. Come on. How can we smell like church? The aroma of the incense that is lifted up in our prayer makes us to smell like church. Hmm? We need to speak like church. How can we speak like church? By allowing ourselves to be vessels of oracles of the kingdom world as we feed our soul on it. So we need to smell like church. We need to speak like church. We need to look like church. How can we look like church? Not only the way how we dress, which is important, which is important. Image is important. Image is important. But more so, because of that daily impartation of the Word of God, automatically the light shines to you. So when people see you, they don't have to fumble, to, they don't identify who you are without you telling them anything. I can give testimony of that. But I don't want to sound like if I am boasting. Alright? So we need to look like church. That's why he calls us in his house. When you come from this place, after you, after, you must possess the qualities of church. For the church is not just the building. Everyone is a church. Make your body the indwelling place, holy place, so that you will be called the church. Are you there? Peter and Paul was like us. They felt the weakness of the flesh, but God still chose them. So you do not feel inferior with yourself. Just allow God to empower you. The enemy makes us feel inferior. But when God calls you and you say yes, you become fearless. When God calls you as a church and you say yes to his call, he empowers you and you become fearless even unto martyrdom. When the Lord makes you worthy, through your baptism and anointing. No one can take that away from you. So what are you afraid of? You are his church and he dwells in you. As a church gives generously, genuinely, also praise 
and serve him willingly. As a church gives generally, genuinely, also praise and serve him willingly. So at the end of it all, do not focus on what is a church, but who is the church. I hope you understand these few words that I shared with you this evening. It is my testimony to you as to the empowerment of the Spirit of God in my own life that you need to be aware of. Sometimes we separate the building from ourselves. So when we come here, we are one way, and when we leave here, we are next way. You are the church. How you speak, how you live, how you talk, how you walk, how you dress, everything about you reflects the church. You are the ambassadors of the kingdom. Don't feel inferior. Don't let low self-esteem build your confidence through the word of God and you will live fearless. May the grace of God, Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us always. Thank you for listening and pray God that we learn something this evening. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Close in him.
Vedic and I just shot our last one. For tomorrow, or second day, we may have it. Today, finish today. Nothing this evening. Nothing this evening. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay, this afternoon we just we have English and reading. Alright, so we just put um become hammery for becomes and priests. Alright, that's for this afternoon, that's from eight thirty to nine thirty. And then from tomorrow we continue with divine service from six AM to eight AM. And then we continue with the children from 8 to 9. And then we will have a presentation on the roles, duties, responsibilities of the priest in charge. And it's with Sabun Natalias. And then from 3 to 4 to 10, we will have Sunday school, as usual. That will be online via Zoom. Thanks for the children, and while that is going on, we'll have our topic from 3 to 4 today on the Beatitudes by Kes Gabriel Selassie. This will be your Kes Gabriel Selassie from Jamaica, this will be via Zoom also. Alright, and then from the afternoon 5, we'll have again divine service here, and from 8 to 9, we'll have English reading. And we continue Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with morning and evening service. 6 in the morning and 5 in the afternoon. Then Saturday morning, we have Holy Communion service here, time 7 here. And Sunday, we have Holy Communion here also. And 7 a.m. and St. Peter's Parish. And San Fernando, 7.30, Holy Trinity Parish, Port of Spain, 7.30, and St. George Parish, uh, Point Porter, 18, 18. Alright, so there is for this week, there is for the announcement. Okay, we will be live streaming all services, morning and evening services, and also some of the sessions we will also live stream. Okay, so thanks for coming, and go in peace, and come back tomorrow at 6 a.m.